Hi everyone, I am Falatimi Akinriade. I'm a doctoral student of occupational therapy, and this is video number two of the Autism Educational Series, which is in collaboration with the Ike Foundation for Autism. In this video, I'm gonna talk very briefly about what sensory integration is. Again, sensory integration is how your body is able to respond to the environment around you. Over 80% of children who have autism spectrum disorder have some type of sensory processing difficulty. In occupational therapy, we focus on an individual's function and independence, and sensory integration plays a huge role in how a child with autism is able to function. So I'm gonna try and explain sensory integration with an example that will hopefully allow you to better understand what this means. So let's say there are two children in primary school that are struggling with mathematics. And as they prepare for the lesson they're going to learn in school tomorrow, child number one gets a good night's rest, so they wake up energized, they eat a good breakfast, and they get to class early, so they're able to sit in the front of the classroom where they can pay attention to what exactly the teacher is saying. Child number two wakes up late because they were not able to sleep the night before. They miss breakfast, so they're hungry, and when they get to class, they're in the back of the classroom where there are much more things to distract them with. Child number one will more than likely be able to better perform compared to child number two because their physiological needs are met. So they've eaten and they've gotten a good night rest. And on top of that, they're in the front of the classroom, so you're so they're in a better environment to learn. Versus child number two, their physiological needs have not been met. They're hungry and they're tired. So even though mathematics is hard for the both of them, child number one has more of an advantage compared to child number two. This is similar to sensory processing, where the child has so many internal distractions with the rest of their environment that they are unable to perform at their best level or their highest level of performance. With sensory integration, if you understand your child's sensory needs and you provide them with the sensory input, the idea is that they should be able to better perform. This doesn't mean that everyday tasks you teach a child with autism won't be difficult. It can still be very challenging, however, they are able to better focus and address the tasks at hand. And with some of the negative behaviors we see with children with autism, I'd like to address this with the same thing you might see a child do when they're hungry. If you see a baby or a child who's hungry, they might scream, they might cry, they might yell. This is similar with children with autism who have sensory needs. If their needs aren't being met, they might scream, they might yell, they might hit. It's the same aspect. Now when I say sensory needs, I'm talking about the five basic senses so hearing, tasting, smelling, touching, and seeing. And then there's also three sensory systems. And that, the three sensory systems are vestibular, and that's just how your body responds to movement. And then there is proprioception, and that's just a big word for knowing where your body and limbs are in space. And then the third one, which I won't address in, these, in this series, and that's interoception. It's a newer one, and that just means you being aware of your body's internal needs. So as I discussed briefly in the first video, a child can be hypersensitive or hyposensitive to those senses. If a child is hypersensitive, that means that the environment is too stimulating for them. It's too much for them. And so they're trying to avoid that sensitive input. Versus a child who is hyposensitive, they are not getting enough. So it's almost like their senses are dull. So we all know pepper. Let me use that with an example. So if a child is hypersensitive to pepper, if you put two pinches of pepper in their food, it will be too much for them. It will be way too spicy. They will be the ones who they might not be able to eat their food or they might be grabbing water after every bite because it's way too sensitive. Versus if someone's hyposensitive to pepper, you can put two spoonfuls of pepper in their food and they might not even taste it because their senses are dull. So if someone is hyposensitive, we might also call them sensory seekers because they're seeking more input. 
So that might be, if we're talking about pepper, that might be someone who will put as much pepper as possible to even taste things at the baseline that you and I might taste. So in the next video, I'm gonna talk about um, the different hyper and hypo sensitivities to all of the senses and what that might look like with a child who has autism. And before I end this video, I do wanna say that we all have sensory preferences. It is normal for every single one of us to have sensory preferences. So you might know someone who is hyposensitive to pepper and might put as much pepper as possible in their food. That is perfectly fine and perfectly normal. We all have preferences. The difference with a child with autism or sensory processing disorder is that they are unable to function in their environment on a day-to-day -day basis because of these sensory needs. So it's not just a preference, it's a need that needs to be met. So hopefully this video was educational for you all. Again, in the next video, I will discuss the different hyper and hyposensitivities to the senses, and hopefully it'll help you observe your child's sensory needs as well. Thank you.